Hi, this is my next tutorial and today's question was sent in by Sarah Finners Finnegan who wants to know what Tudor underwear was like, so I'll tell you. I'm going to start with women first uh, because they're by far the most complex. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my pictures up so I can show you. Right, women had a freaking ton of stuff they used to wear. The one thing they didn't wear was knickers. They didn't wear bras either. Actually, that's two things they didn't wear. They didn't wear knickers, they didn't wear bras. Instead of wearing bras, they'd have corsets. Uh -oh, it's just something I found on Google, just to show you. It's like iPod inception. They wore corsets. Men would wear corsets or girdles as well. And that would to keep everything in and to give them this nice petite figure. Although it was fashionable to be quite fat and plump, to show that you had lots of food, it was also quite fashionable to be really skinny. So that's why they had a girdle. So to say, they didn't wear knickers. Now, a few months ago, I was fortunate enough to try on a Tudor gown and it took flipping ages and ages because the gowns don't come in one piece. They come in thousands of pieces. Not literally thousands, a lot. They come in lots of pieces. Now they've got all kinds of stuff. They've got this, which is not the best to see. And that's called a farthingale. That's like a whale-boned hoop to give to give them this sort of waist and then hip curvature to it. They were more fashionable during Elizabethan times, really. They also had this, which is a kersel. This is like the underdress. They'd also have, rich Tudor noble women would also have like sleeves which attached, everything came off. They'd have more slips and undergarments. They'd have all kinds. Lots of poorer women tended to just stick to the curl when they were out and about and doing things. Um, there were a case though, however, um, where a couple of years ago, I think 2012, it might have been 2013, in Lemberg Castle in, I think it's Austria, they found some evidence of some 16th century bra and pants. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that. There you are, that's a bit better. Now, obviously, this has seen better days. It's 500 year old. It's not really little people bra and crotchless pants like it looks. But they were found then. Some people think that's evidence of like the first sort of bra and pants. But obviously, there's no, nothing recorded about it. Now, because Tudor women didn't wear pants, that makes you think about what did they do when they had a period? Nobody really knows because people don't talk about it then. And they don't talk about it now, to be honest, pretty much. But they definitely didn't talk about it in Tudor times. So the most educated guess we've got, because it's not really wrote down and documented and well-evidenced, is that they rolled up a rag, fashioned it between their legs, and tied it around the middle with a sort of belt type thing. And that would be our best guess. Before I come on to Tudor IG, which I am going to do, um, I'm going to talk about men. Because the men would have these big cob pieces, as you know, you've seen them. A big cob piece is what they were. Obviously, it's to make them look like they've got big willies. But it also served a purpose. Sometimes they keep changing it. Sometimes they keep snuffing it. Sometimes they keep weapons in it. I, I don't mean the knob. I mean, like, an actual little dagger or something like that. Although, I've read that a few times, and I can't imagine practicalities of that, trying to whip that from out your groin, your dagger. I don't understand why. But apparently they did. And these were made mostly of whale bones, and they were padded, to so give this big dick illusion, and... The, nobody could have a bigger cob piece than the king, because obviously the king, despite not being able to sire any uh, sons, had a massive cock, apparently. Probably not. It's probably bollocks. Probably a bit minging, actually, because they had kind of syphilis and everything else as well. But there we are. He even went so far, Henry VIII, to have cod piece fitted into his armour, and it's a real vulgar thing. And if you look on um, the Tower of London website, you can see a picture of that, you can go visit it. I might have took my son, who... They were just mortified with it. Anyway, back to hygiene then. So, they were quite smelly, the Tudors, but not as smelly as people would have you believe. The Tudors were told to clean every day. Cleanliness, after all, is next to godliness. And if you're a Tudor and you're not godly, you're going to be burnt on the stake by Bloody Mary, or you're going to be executed as a heretic, or hung at Tyburn, or something bad's going to happen to you, so eh, stay clean. The women... Particularly the poorer women were told to particularly wash well because their husbands wouldn't like them and they're not going to get laid and they're not going to do their fulfil their role in Tudor society if their husband doesn't touch them and it's not dutiful and all that sort of stuff. So they were particularly clean. Now, Tudor hygiene then. 
they'd wash every few days at the very least. And this would involve the poorer people washing in whatever water source they could get. And a little bit, if you were a little bit richer, so I'm not talking like the king or anything like that, or Tudor court, courtiers, just anybody really who had a little bit of cash, you'd get a wooden tub, a bit like a tin bath, but made of wood. You'd line it with sacks and linen um, sort of strips of fabric and you'd fill it with water you'd heated next to your fire and you'd fill it with things like sage or uh, chamomile or rosemary any herbs you could find <clears throat> although you were sometimes condemned as a witch for growing herbs so I don't really really found it and you'd get in it and it'd make you smell a little bit nicer Henry VIII actually had his own bath. It were a big brass bath he had, and he had actual plumbing put in, not plumbing from a mains pipe on the road like we have. Plumbing from a water source which were heated by a fire outlet, and somebody it would have taps and everything, and it was just a big brass bath to keep it nice and warm. And he obviously had servants, and his, his privy council would help him bath there, and the groom of the stool would probably have some part to play in that when he's not wiping his arse. So that's that. That's the Tudor hygiene. The other interesting part of the Tudor hygiene is that because Tudors were smelly, they were encouraged to wash the clothes. Now that was massively dangerous. Now they didn't have any knickers to rub through, remember? Nobody wore pants. Men had hoses, they were called hoses, like things they had on the legs. But well, they're not really pants, they were like the tight things you see Tudors wear in films. They also had shirts, incidentally, as well. And they would start up the neck here and they'd go down to their knees. And they would keep them on all the time. And they'd probably wash them, they'd probably change them every day more or less. Even the poor people would have, even the poor men would have the shirts. Everybody would have these big long shirts in them days. Anyway, back to washing the clothes. So the Tudor women would be expected to wash the clothes. And this involved taking your laundry down to the, um, to the river, sitting on the side of the river and rubbing it through. Sometimes they used oil and things like that to rub the clothes through, which is a bit stupid really, isn't it? But they did. And the river would wash over it, Quite often, it'd wash the Tudor women away as well because they don't got time to be having swimming lessons and stuff like that. None of them could swim. More accidents, uh, more fatalities, sorry, in Tudor times occurred from drowning, from women being washed away because their woolen or linen clothes got so wet and bogged down when they were washing their other clothes in the river um, that it actually took them with it and they drowned and they couldn't get out and the clothes were too heavy. So that's one of the main Tudor fatalities, really. But the women's job was to wash their men's clothes and their own and the kids and everybody's. And that's what they did. Now, if you still stank, which you probably did because they were a sweaty lot, and I, believe me when I say I tried on these Tudor gowns on, this were like a big noble gown, it was hot. And this is like, it weren't a hot time of year. And there was layers and layers and layers and layers and it kept coming and coming. I could hardly walk and I was sweating. And that was after like 10 minutes, I would get it off. I've had enough. So these people did swear, and they swear a lot, and they must have done. There were all the layers and the corset and the breathing, and oh, particularly in some of them, must have reeked. So what they had, they had this thing called, rather lovely, a nosegay. And I love that. It's called a nosegay because gay being the old English for happy, and it's literally something to make your nose happy, stop your stinking. Rich Tudors could afford perfume, so they didn't bother with these nosegays. But the nosegay was basically um, a a small bouquet or a small um, wreath of flowers which you could put into your petticoats or to your seams or if you're into a man like attached around your corset and in your shirt and it would be things like lavender and other really strong smelling herbs and basically what you do is you walk along and it'd give the illusion that you'd had one of these luxurious baths and didn't stink but actually it wasn't it was the nosegay doing its job so gone on a tangent a little bit but in answer to your question, what were Tudor bra and pants like? We didn't have them. They all wore corsets and they all went commando. <laughs>